Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany of BrittanyJJones.com. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the channel. I hope that you would like what you see and subscribe below for more. In today's video, we are going to be sewing. We're going to be sewing along to my new Nomi pattern, ME 2013. In this video, we'll be making view A with the square neckline, but we'll be doing view B sleeves on it. So I'm kind of doing like a combination of both. I found that the instructions for view A looked a little bit challenging, so I really wanted to show you all how to work through that. And of course, the sleeves. You always got to show how to install sleeves. So that's what we're going to be sewing to in this video. I'm really excited about it. Y'all go ahead and cut out your pattern, cut out your fabric, transfer all of your markings, and let's start sewing. The first thing that we're going to do is start to work on our back. So go ahead and grab your center back and your side backs, and we're going to put it right sides facing, and go ahead and pan along the seams. So with right sides facing, I'm going to find my notches and start to pin in place. So here's my double notch here. Once you have your side backs pinned onto your back, we can go ahead and stitch it in a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now that you have your back sewn, center back and the side backs sewn together, now we want to go ahead and press your seams open flat. You do not need to finish off your seam allowance. I finished off mine and before I started this one, I was like, wait, we have to attach a lining. So there's no need to finish off these seam allowances with a serger or however you would normally finish off your seams. The next step for us to do is right sides facing. We're going to sew our side fronts onto our backs along the shoulder seam. So again, with right sides facing, we're going to match up our notch and pin in place. Once you have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch in a 5 8 of inch seam allowance and I am using a zigzag stitch. Now that we have our shoulder seam sewn, you want to go ahead and press your seam open flat. And next, we can go ahead and sew the side seams. We could have sewed it all in one step in the last step, but that's okay. Go ahead and match up your notches and pin the side seams together. Go ahead and pin the other side the same exact way and then stitch it at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, after you have your shoulders and your side seam sewn, now you want to go ahead and grab your lining. And for your lining, you want to stitch it the same exact way that you did for your main fabric. So you want to sew your back to your side backs and then sew your side fronts to the shoulders and the side seams. So this is the lining that I'm using here. With your seams, you want to press them open after you have them sewn. And so again, I just repeated the same exact steps that I did for the main fabric for the lining. So now we can go ahead and put the lining over the main fabric, right sides facing. So I'm just gonna put it over like so. And we're going to stitch around the neckline. So you should have transferred some circles here. And again, I'm going with view A with the square neck. So if you're doing the square neck, but you want it sleeveless, the directions are a little bit different for the side seams. But because I am going to add the sleeves, I'm following along with view B for the side seams. All right, once you have your lining over your fabric, right sides facing, you should have transferred a circle right here. This circle is for the front of view A. So you do want to make sure that you transfer this circle here and just start pinning your lining in place. We're going to stitch it along the neck edge from dot to dot. Make sure that you match up your dots and your shoulder seams and just pin in place. Once you have it pinned again from large dot to large dot all the way around the neckline, now we can go ahead and stitch it in place. Be sure to back stitch at both of your large dots. Let's go ahead and stitch it in place now.
Okay, now that we have the lining stitched along the neckline, again, we went from dot to dot. Now we can put this to the side and start to work on the center front. I'm not going to trim just yet. I'm going to trim it all together, but first I want to install the center front. So go ahead and grab your center front, the fabric, and the lining. All right, so with our front piece here, with right sides facing, we want to grab our lining, lay it right sides facing to the center front like so. And we're going to pan up here along the upper edge. So again, make sure you have it right sides facing. Go ahead and pin it in place. After you have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch it across up here along the upper edge. Be sure to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Once you have it sewn, go ahead and trim your seam. Okay, I'm going to flip it. I'm going to give it a press and go back to the sewing machine. I'm going to do a row of understitching right here along the edge, making sure that I have my seam allowance facing toward the lining. You just want to do understitching right here close to your seam. All right, after you have done your understitch, you can see here I have my understitch here. I flipped my lining over to the inside and I have basted the sides together. You can baste the raw edge if you like. On the bottom, I just basted the sides together. So once you have it like so, now we want to go ahead and install it into the top. And what we're gonna do is first, we're going to stitch it onto the side front right sides facing. So I'm gonna turn it like this and just kind of move the lining out of the way. Start working on this side front first. With right sides facing, we're gonna match up our notches and we're gonna match up that small dot. So the small dot should really be at where we left off our stitch at. So you want to pin that there, match up your notches and just start to pin in place. So it should look like this after you have one side of it pinned. And again, I just pinned it onto the fabric only. Now, once you have it pinned, we can go and baste it in place. After we have it basted, then we're gonna take our lining and instead of slip stitching it, we're just gonna fold it right over it like so. And then we will stitch through all thicknesses. Now, if you've been sewing for a while, you can go ahead and omit the basting stitch and just lay your lining over now, pin it in place and go ahead and stitch it. But I do recommend going ahead and basting it in place first, looking at your stitch, making sure everything is nice and clean, and then we can lay the lining over. Again, this is a step that's going to eliminate the slip stitching, and then we can just continue stitching from where we left off at, continue stitching all the way down, and then we can trim our seam. So first, let's go ahead and baste this in place now, and we can pin the other side the same way and baste that side as well. Okay, I've just stitched my center front on. I've just basted it. And I just wanna take a quick look at it before I stitch down the lining and make sure my seams look good. Everything is nice and even. It just needs a really good press. So now we can go ahead and flip our lining over that. I'm gonna flip it right side back inside out. Okay, so now that we have that basted, now we wanna take our lining and we're just gonna lay it right over top. Again, this is just eliminating the slip stitch on view A, but if you do prefer slip stitching, feel free to do it. This is just another option if you are more, if you just prefer machine sewing more. Match up your notches and continue pinning the lining in place.
Okay, now we can go ahead and stitch them in place. We can follow along the same previous stitching line that we have here. We can just follow right along that basing stitch. Okay, now that we have it stitched, we can go ahead and trim down our seam, and then we can go ahead and do under stitching all the way along the neck edge. We did it along this front portion here, but we didn't do it along the side. So we can go ahead and do under stitching now after we trim it. So let's go ahead and do that now. When you have multiple seam allowances like this, right here I have four seam allowances, you may want to layer your seam allowances so they're not all the same length. If you just chop it off just like this and you're just shortening the bulk, but if you want to kind of reduce it and eliminate it a little bit, you can consider doing trimming down one to a half an inch, trimming down the other to three eighths and the other to a quarter of an inch, just layering it so that it's not all just getting chopped off at the same length. You're kind of layering it to reduce some of the bulk. Okay, so here's a look at the inside of mine. I've gone ahead and trimmed down my seams here. I've done my understitching all the way along the neck edge here. If you're wondering why didn't we just sew the lining together, for this one, in order to get a really nice, clean, sharp right here along the neckline, it is best to do it this way by doing your fabric and lining separate for the center front and then attaching it to the side seams. Now for view B with the kind of scoop neckline, we do just sew the lining all together the same way that we did for the back. So it all kind of depends on the shape of the neckline. So that is why, in case you're wondering why we did it the way we did it for this, is because we can get a nice, clean, sharp neckline here for our square neck. So now the next thing for us to do is just baste the raw edges together. So you just want to baste all the way around along the lower edge as well as around the sleeves. Let's go ahead and do our basting now. Okay, I've just done my basting stitch along the armhole as well as the lower edge of the top. So now we can go ahead and grab the lower band and sew that on. Pattern piece number five, that is our lower band. You should have cut out two. And what I've done here is I just stitched them together along the sides, right sides facing. So I have them stitched again along the side seams of the lower bands, right sides facing. After I have them stitched on one lower edge, I went ahead and folded up a half an inch. And then after I had it folded up, I pressed it in place and then I trimmed it down to a quarter of an inch. So again, take your lower band pieces, right sides facing, go ahead and stitch them along the side seams like so. And then on one of the lower edges, you want to fold up half an inch and then you want to trim it down to a quarter of an inch. One thing that I did, I did put a stitch right here, right on my half an inch. That just helps me to fold it up better. That's totally optional. You can just trace out a half an inch marking and fold it up or you can use a seam gauge and just fold up a half an inch. So after you have that done, now we can go ahead and pin it to the lower edge of the top. So with right sides facing, I'm just going to slip the lower band right over the lower edge of the top like so. I'm gonna grab my pins and then we can pin it in place. I'm gonna match up my notches that I transferred as well as my side seams and then I'm just gonna pin it in place. Okay, once you have your lower band pinned on, now we can go ahead and stitch it in a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, and then you can trim down your seam. All right, after you have your lower band sewn on, you wanna go ahead and trim down your seam, and you want to press it so it is going down toward the lower band. From here, the next thing that we need to do is take this folded edge here and we're going to put it right over our previous stitch and we're going to stitch and ditch. Now I will say there is a simpler way to attach this lower band, especially if you don't want to do like slip stitching down here or stitching in a ditch. You can just fold your lower band in half and then pin both raw edges to the lower edge of your top and then just stitch it in place like that and finish it off with your serger is actually what we're gonna be doing to the sleeves. So again, if you find this to be something that you're not really wanting to do, there's always another option. Like I said, once you have the sides of your lower band sewn, you can just fold them in half like so. So this is the lower band, fold it in half like so, and then pin the lower band to the lower edge of the top. And then you can just stitch it again and finish it off with the serger. So 
that's another option that I want to mention because I'm pretty sure that's how I did it when I sold my sample. So again, I just want to mention that. But from here, we're just going to fold the lower edge over our seam. And then on the right side, we are going to place our pen. So you want to place your pens in here like so. You want to make sure that you're catching the folded edge on the inside. So again, fold it over. And then on this side, Go ahead and grab your pins and pin it in place. And make sure that you're catching the folded press edge on the inside. Okay, once you have it pinned, again, do a double check to make sure that you have the lower edge pinned in. And on the right side, we can go to the sewing machine now and we just want to stitch right here in the seam doing a stitch in the ditch. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, now that you have your lower band sewn on, now we can start working on our sleeves. For the sleeves, you want to go ahead and grab your sleeve pieces here. As you can see, I finished off the raw edges. I'm going to fold it so it is right sides facing, and we can stitch our sleeve seam together. Go ahead and grab your pins, and we can pin it in place. You want to match up your notch that you transferred, and we can go ahead and stitch on a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now that we have our sleeve seam sewn, you want to press your seam open. And now we can go ahead and grab our sleeve bands. For our sleeve bands, you should have cut out two. This right here, I've gone ahead and folded my sleeve band in half and I've stitched it together right here on the seam right sides facing. So again, pattern piece number eight, you just want to fold it in half and go ahead and stitch it in place. After you have it stitched, now we can open it out and fold it in half like so with wrong sides facing, so the right side should be out facing you. And now we can go ahead and pin it onto the sleeve. So I'm gonna turn my sleeve so that it's right sides out, and I'm just going to slip the band right over the lower edge of the sleeve, matching up my sleeve seam, as well as the notch that I transferred. So again, go ahead and pin everything in place and just continue pinning the sleeve band onto the sleeve. After you have it pinned, then you can go ahead and stitch it at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. All right, now that we have our bands sewn onto our sleeve, it should look like this. You can go ahead and finish off the edge with your serger and you want to press your seam going up to the sleeve. So I've done that here, I've done it to both of my sleeves. So now we can go ahead and pin it onto the top. So with right sides facing, first you want to make sure that you find the right armhole for the sleeve. The single notch goes toward the front and the double notch goes toward the back. So here is a single notch here. That will go on this side. First, I'm going to match it up here on the outside. I'm just going to clip away these loose threads. And again, with right sides facing, just want to match up your seams here. Pin in place. And I like to bring it through like so, so then I can really get here to the inside of it. Now you should have transferred some notches as well as some circles. I'm gonna pin at my notches. So pin there, make sure everything is matching up. Make sure that you have your double notch and single notch matching. And then you should have transferred a dot at the top of the sleeve. I just transferred a notch that matches up with your shoulder seam. So go ahead and match that and pin it in place. And then just continue pinning the remainder of your sleeve in place, matching up your dots and your notches. Okay, once you have it pinned in place, you can see I have mine pinned here. Just want to make sure that everything is pinned nice and smooth on the inside like so. 
And now we can go to the sewing machine. You can go ahead and stitch it at a 5 8th of an inch seam allowance and then finish off your raw edge. And then you want to do the same thing for your other sleeve. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, once you have your sleeve sewn, you can go ahead and finish off your raw edge. And this is what it will look like on the inside of your garment. I do recommend using a lining that's in similar color to your main fabric. That way the stitches won't show like mine are with the lighter lining. Or I would recommend just changing out your thread, maybe your bobbin thread and your serger thread for the inside. That way it just coordinates a little bit better on the inside of your garment. But once you have your sleeve sewn, you can go ahead and just kind of steam your seam to set that in. And you are all done with your top. Again, we made view A top with view B sleeves from my pattern, No Me ME 2013. Well, that is all for the video. I hope that you all enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave them down for me below. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn your notifications so you do not miss when the next sew along goes live. Until then, blessings everyone. Bye.